Episode 1 of Fate. The Winx Saga begins with a farmer out counting sheep. After stepping through a magical portal, he's chased by a snarling, maniacal beast that grabs him and drags the man off screen. We then cut to a generic montage of our magical school as a pop song plays in the background. New Girl Bloom is attending the school for fairies and eventually meets Stella, who gives us some exposition about what's going on. There's seven different otherworld realms, and Alfia is the one she's currently in. Bloom currently has the skills of a fire fairy, and is about to begin lessons in channeling and honing her magic. The curriculum there has been designed specifically to do just this and help shape the future of the otherworld. While Bloom gets acquainted with her roommates, including Aisha, Earth Fairy Tara and Moody Musa. The setup is undeniably similar to Harry Potter in fact, this is even outright referenced after a jag-torn mansplaining when Sky shows up to lend Bloom a hand. Anyway, we receive more exposition from Stella as she mentions that magic is directly tied to emotion, the stronger the emotion the stronger the magic. Trouble brews outside in the woods as Tara's father uncovers the dead body of the shepherd we saw killed at the start of the episode. It turns out he has char residue over him too, which headmistress Farrah Dowling worries could be a hint towards something ancient and evil lurking out there again. As whispers become murmurs, the school is abuzz with theories over what happened to this dead man. Further teen angst adds to the drama, as Stella tells Sky, in no uncertain terms, to stay away from Bloom. Looks like we've got the makings of a love triangle here guys. Bloom heads out and beyond the magic barrier to see what lies outside. When she does, she looks over old pictures on her phone of the charred remains of her childhood home. It's now clear that she was directly responsible for this, given she was a fire fairy. We then jump back in time and see what happened that evening. She struggled to control her fire and ended up covering her mother in third-degree burns after falling out with her parents. Thankfully, they didn't know she was responsible, but it also begs the question how did she conjure up that level of magic? Well, Aisha may have the answer. Before we get there though, we return to the present as Bloom conjures up some flames, but struggles to control it. Aisha shows and conjures forth some water powers of her own, extinguishing Bloom's hungry flames. If there's anyone who knows what it's like to lose control, it's Aisha. When she was a kid, she flooded her secondary school after failing a math test. Back at school, Aisha tells her she could be a changeling, a fairy baby switched with a human one at birth. This means she could well be pure-blooded. As Bloom walks away, we cut across to Dowling who opens up her secret bookcase and heads inside. What could be inside? I'm sure we'll find out by season's end. Meanwhile, Stella lends her ring to Bloom and encourages her to head outside the barrier, telling the girl to go back to the first world. She does just this, showing up outside her family home and watching her parents inside. They obviously think she's in Europe studying, but she rings them all the same and says hello. After an emotional chat, Bloom decides to head back but on the way, finds herself stalked by a menacing, snarling beast. Thankfully Dowling shows up and stops the creature, as we find out this beast is known as the Burn One. Although Bloom is saved, Stella's ring is lost. Farah speaks to Saul and tells him they've tied down the Burn One, and that there's a changeling operating in the First World. Well, the next scene shows that same Burn demon snarling and growling while chained to a chair. As Beatrix shows up, she conjures her lightning abilities and shocks it. Good morning, sunshine. Episode 2 of Fate The Winx Saga begins with Farah and Saul discussing the Burn Ones. Specifically, Farah intends to use her powers to mind-read the creature and find out what it's hiding. As flashes of the past bleed through when she does, Farah Dowling suddenly jumps back in shock. Back at school, a new day dawns and all the characters prepare for their magical lessons. Aisha encourages Bloom to be excited, while Tara finds herself struggling to show the others her body. Eventually they all get dressed as Stella arrives and tells them all to keep quiet about the missing ring and what happened with the burned one. The first year Faris gather at the stone circle as their first lesson begins. While everyone manages to control their magic, Bloom meanwhile cannot. In fact, she can't even conjure up flames. As the lesson comes to a close, Bloom gains confirmation from Dowling that she is, in fact, a changeling. Unfortunately, Dowling doesn't know who Bloom's parents are either. 
The boys meanwhile continue to practice their fighting moves outside. As they do, Stella and Sky get talking about the missing ring and try to concoct a plan to bring it back. Among the male Faris is Riven, who Beatrix recruits to help break into Dowling's office. He eventually agrees to do so. At lunch, Sky arrives and sits with Bloom asking if she's okay. Stella watches them suspiciously as Bloom agrees to get Stella's ring back for her. Sky isn't so sure this is a good idea though and follows after Bloom, trying to dissuade her but to no avail. Instead, Bloom heads down to the stone circle again where Stella shows up and begins antagonizing the trainee fairy. As she mentions her birth parents, Bloom finally manages to muster up some flames. It's not enough for Stella though, who pushes her to do more. On the back of this lesson, Bloom begins to use anger as a way of channeling her magical use. Aisha spies Bloom's open journal and tries to dissuade Bloom from using anger as a method of using her powers. Anger of course leads to hate, which in turn leads to suffering and the dark side. Musa winds up with a new love interest, an earth fairy called Sam. Meanwhile, Tara grows closer to Dane. Only, Riven messages and antagonizes Dane, calling him a flower picker. On the back of this message, he hurries away. Later that day, all of our fairies head off together to get Stella's ring back. Aisha warns that negative emotions are unpredictable and unreliable, but the others refuse to listen. Anyway, they cross the barrier and head into the barn where the burn one is tied up. Only, it's actually gone missing. Musa senses something outside and immediately doubles over in pain. The others however find a whole trail of dead bodies lying on the floor like a bloodied carpet. Saul is still alive though, breathing heavily and sad against a tree. He's been infected too, but thankfully Tara's quick thinking allows her to give him a potion to heal for the time being. Bloom though wanders off on her own and finds herself face to face with the burned one. Thankfully Aisha arrives at the last second and blasts it with water, impaling the creature against a log. Thankfully they manage to get Stella's ring back from a tube, which happens to be inside the creature. Bloom recovers the ring and brings it back to Stella, as the trainee Faris can breathe a sigh of relief for now. Back at school, Professor Harvey and Farah patch up Saul after his run-in with the burned one. Apparently he saw someone in the road too. This someone let the burn one loose and as we soon see, it happens to be Beatrix. She's currently in Dowling's office and desperate to uncover the secrets lurking in its Flashbacks open episode 3 of Fate. The Wink Saga's Bloom inexplicably sees images of her birth, including a strange woman telling her to come and find her. Who could this be? Well, stay tuned as we're about to find out. Aisha suggests they speak to Tara and look through her father's yearbooks for answers. Before that though, it's lesson time. Farah tells the different girls to channel their powers as we see everyone in action. Despite Bloom's problems in the past, she easily controls her fire, while it's Aisha who ends up with problems controlling water. Speaking of problems, Saul continues to suffer from his inflictions with horrible black tendrils pulsing through his back. For now, he manages to hide his pain. The kids continue to exhibit problems, with Tara held back by her self-consciousness over her body, and Musa distracted by Sam's presence. Bloom, however, is fixated on the vision she had at the start of the episode. On the back of this, she decides to go to the stone circle and conjure up as much magic as possible. Aisha, however, is not sure this is a good idea. Instead, they head out to party where all our faris happen to be alongside the males playing beer pong and drinking. Bloom learns from Riven that Stella used her magic to blind her best friend, so she quickly vacates the area. When she does, she sneaks into the abandoned east wing of the school and finds a portrait in the basement. She realizes that Dowling is lying and intends to confront her about this. Given Bloom is drunk, Aisha tells her this isn't a good idea, but admits she's not going to hold Bloom back anymore. While Boom gets closer to finding out the truth, Musa kisses Sam, while Tara questions whether her and Ain could be a unit. While all this teen angst is going on, Beatrix seizes her opportunity and breaks into Dowling's hidden chamber, using Callum as a sacrificial lamb. Fair and Saul talk to a team on the hunt for the burned one. A different one of course, given Aisha and Bloom already killed one last episode. 
Well, this time the group are successful and manage to kill the burned one, but it's not the same one who attacks all. Bloom makes her choice and confronts Dowling after all. There, she learns that Rosalind was headmistress before her, and the pictures were stashed in the abandoned East Wing. Bloom is understandably suspicious and demands to speak to Rosalind. Only, she's apparently been dead for years. Bloom, now going from someone who couldn't control her powers to mastering it in a few short episodes, heads to the stone circle and blasts out flames in rage. She quickly extinguishes them though as Sky shows up and hears that she's a changeling. However, she also hears whispers about a burn one in the forest, and they head off in search. All our characters at the party receive a message and scramble for the forest where Bloom and Sky are. Eventually the burn one shows up, just as our magical fairies team up with Sky to stop it. Dowling appears too and kills the creature. She decides to reprimand the fairies in the morning, but for now, they're told to head up to their rooms. Bloom talks to Aisha about her night and how she was able to control her magic. Given she's a natural with her abilities, Aisha tells her to be realistic and how her parents may not be part of some elaborate scheme. Meanwhile, Farah tells the other teachers that Bloom has the potential to be the most powerful fairy they've encountered in some time. It's also clear that they've lied about Rosalind being dead. Dowling warns the others that Bloom can meet her, as the camera pans inside the magical portal in Farah's basement, to see Rosalind being held captive. Episode 4 of Fate The Winx Saga begins with Saul and Farah certain that someone has tried to break into their office. Using magic, they figure out that Callum was killed using biometrics. Beatrix meanwhile, finds herself obsessed with Bloom and checking out her Instagram feed, Bloom recruits Aisha to her cause, tasking her with checking Callum's office and looking through his files for anything that may help. When Tara and Musa show up, and with news of Bloom being a changeling breaking out around school, Bloom goes into hiding. Well, Aisha has some sort of listening device planted in the office and replays it later on, understanding that the teachers are hiding something. Meanwhile, Dane apologizes to Tara for what happened between them with the video. She's having none of it though and tells him he needs to be careful who to trust. While her father leaves, Tara starts sniffing around his things and notices something involving vessel stones. Stella's mother, Queen Luna herself, rocks up at school ready for the assembly, while Bloom takes advantage of this mandatory meeting to head off on her own and investigate the East Wing. However, she runs into Sky who questions what she's doing. Eventually she and Skye head down to the basement and find a picture showing Skye's father with Rosalind. Well, the two bump into Riven and Beatrix on the way, leading to some ensuing tension between the group. While Riven and Skye talk outside, back inside Bloom and Beatrix discuss Rosalind and eventually break a lock into a war room. Inside, they find a map and lots of secret documents. Back at the assembly, the Queen warns that there's at least five burn ones out and about, and the threat they pose to the school and kingdom itself is very real. Afterwards, she takes Stella into Dowling's office and shows her exactly how powerful they can make their magic. She's not happy with Dowling's perceived lack of progress on this front, with the Queen conjuring up nightmarish visions to show exactly how far this magic can go. In the war room, Bloom finds clues in the form of a place called Astrodel. After Beatrix short circuits Bloom's phone without her realizing, she offers to take the girl there. Bloom has initial doubts, but eventually heads off with Beatrix in a car they've stolen. Well, apparently one of the Queen's guards was knocked out as Farah and the other teachers set out to try and bring the two girls back. Well, Beatrix takes Bloom out to the outskirts of town and conjures forth Astrodel from nothing, a ruinous place that was destroyed thanks to the Burn Ones arriving. A military unit from Alfia torched the place to the ground thanks to Queen Luna's command. She's sure that she and Bloom are connected given she's seen visions of Dowling, Silva and Harvey together. Her story and memories of Rosalind match that of Beatrix's and she's intending to free Rosalind to find out more. Only, on the way back to school the pair are stopped by Dowling and the others. When they head back, Stella is taken away from the school, as the Queen decides to train her up at home instead. As the episode closes out, Dowling begins to suspect Bloom knows more than she's letting on, and rings her parents to keep her in the loop going forward. Episode 5 of Fate 
The Winx saga begins with screaming as Beatrix is tortured by Dowling. Pushing through her mental defenses, she wants to know exactly why she's at her school. Beatrix has the headmistress's number though and plays the victims, promising to turn Dowling into a monster. Meanwhile, Bloom and Sky practice out in the yard as a projection of burn ones are thrown up. As Professor Harvey soon tells them, the way to defeat a burn one is to find its inner core and destroy it. Or, you know, impale it on a log seems to work too. With Sky and Bloom teamed up together, it turns out Sky is actually working as a spy for Saul too, who feeds back what Bloom has been doing. Well, the males have bigger problems to deal with when a soldier feeds back that two burn ones were operating together. With Bloom distant and determined to find out what Beatrix knows, the rest of the girls realize something is up. Thankfully they don't have to wait too long as Stella happens to have learned some tricks and presents herself to Musa who senses her presence. As they sit and talk together, it turns out what happened to Ricky was a mistake. The queen twisted it to be a purposeful action though, a ploy to make Stella more feared. Bloom finally speaks to Beatrix and learns that she killed Callum. However, in order to learn more, Beatrix tells her she needs to free her from the prison she's in. This plan involves heading down to the stone circle with a magical book and a talisman of sorts. This is their only option to free Rosalind and learn the truth. Anyway, once their sky shows up and sees her messing around with the book, Bloom pretends like everything is okay and asks about Aster Dell, revealing the truth that she's seen. Bloom tells him that there's something being hidden but quite what remains to be seen. Anyway, Sky and Bloom eventually hook up together, but it turns out Bloom's tricked him with a sedative. When Bloom heads back to the school she's blindsided by the other girls who stop her and try to convince Bloom that Dowling only has their best interests at heart. However, they also don't know about Rosalind and what happened at Aster Dell. Eventually she caves though and Bloom hands over the talisman and walks away. Back at the dorm, it happens to be Stella who speaks up as the voice of reason, presenting herself to the group and telling them Bloom has a right to know where she's from. Bloom heads to see Dowling and learns the truth about what happened in the past. Through a flashback we see that Dowling made a mistake. Rosalind was her mentor at the time, and the day of Aster Dell's destruction, saw all the teachers conjuring up magic together. Apparently when Faris are joined together they can conjure up a good amount of magic. Unfortunately when they burned the village to a cinder, Rosalind lied and told them it had been evacuated. But it wasn't, leaving them with a heavy heart and drowning in guilt. Bloom eventually breaks Beatrix free from her cell, with the help of Stella and the others of course. While the students set out to find Rosalind, Stella pushes Beatrix into the magic barrier and leaves her as a vegetable on the ground. While the group descend deeper, Aisha heads back to see Farah, warning her what the students are up to. Back at the school, Bloom uncovers Rosalind in her magical tomb. She telepathically says hello to Bloom and opens her eyes as the episode comes to a close. Episode 6 of Fate the Winx saga begins with Bloom speaking to Rosalind from within her magic prison and asking the fairy to channel the flames within her. Using Rosalind's influence and tools, Bloom starts to channel her abilities. As she does, Aisha rocks up with Dowling, who heads down to find Bloom before it's too late. Unfortunately, the fairy releases Rosalind from her prison who's on the hunt for more magic. That brings her down to the stone circle, where she begins using the stones as a conduit to charge up. Once there, Rosalind admits that Aster Dell was not a mistake. It turns out there were blood witches operating there, and she had the soldiers take them out with one quick hit. Bloom was kidnapped by those witches originally too, who wanted to use her magic. This also explains the burned ones, who have been after her all this time, believing she has the power to stop them. While the girls are confined to their rooms, Stella and Aisha come to blows over getting Dowling involved. Only, their argument is quickly broken up by word that the burn ones have broken into the school and have started attacking students. Sam is immediately injured. As Rosalind guides Bloom into using her powers, she suddenly stops using her firepower to talk to Rosalind. She promises to help find Bloom's birth parents, but for now, word of the school attack sees our student hurry back to help. On the way, she runs into Skye who follows her inside. He's obviously not happy with the way she drug him and reminds her that just because something seems right doesn't mean that it actually is. 
As the students gather together in the assembly hall, Dowling informs them that Salarian troops are on the way, but they may have to attack the burn ones before then. She tells them all to prepare as they may need to use their powers. Bloom catches up though, and tells them what Rosalind is doing, and how the burned ones are after her. This stone circle, as we soon find out, actually works as a conduit for the school's barrier. If the magic is consumed completely then the barrier will fail. Well, it seems like that's happening as more burn ones start to arrive. Elsewhere, Sky learns the truth about his father, Andreas. It turns out he was killed in Asterdell by Saul's blade. It's great timing too, as this bombshell reveal is suddenly interrupted by the burn ones attacking outside. While they do, Tara and her father try their best to save Sam's life. Only, Tara suddenly leaves to find Musa with her headphones on. It turns out her mum died a year back, and she could feel every part of it, oh man, what a great flashback that would have been to help her character development. Tara hugs Musa and promises she won't let him die. In fact, Musa has a change of heart and arrives to hold his hand through the pain. Bloom heads outside with Aisha and Stella, conjuring up her powers and bursting into flames like a phoenix. Finally understanding her true power, flame wings protrude from her back, and she effortlessly destroys the creatures. At the same time, Tara and Musa both manage to save Sam. Meanwhile, Rosalind rocks up in the school, and specifically to greet Beatrix. She recruits Dane and Riven to her ranks, while simultaneously revealing that she's also unlocked some ancient magic they all thought was laid dormant. Bloom finally speaks to Dowling in her office, who forgives her for what happened in the past. Bloom even asks for a hug from the headmistress for her help and care in bringing her to safety. It's a pretty significant moment in their relationship, one that sees Dowling struggling to hold back tears. After everything that's happened, Bloom heads back home to her parents and greets them again. Only, she hasn't come alone as all our faris rock up to crash for the night. While sat together, Bloom conjures her fire powers and shows her parents what she can do. They're shocked, of course, as we were left to wonder what's next for our teenage fairy. Meanwhile, the Salarian troops arrive at school along with Queen Luna. They arrest Saul for the attempted murder of Andreas, who steps out the car and reveals that he's very much alive. He greets his son and leaves the door wide open for a second season. Meanwhile, Dowling and Rosalind talk out in the graveyard. Rosalind admits that there's a 1,000-year-old legend about Dragon Flame, which is directly linked to the origin of the Burned Ones. She also admits to being the one to let these cursed beings in. She also planted Beatrix at the school, who was working with Andreas all this time. He was kept in hiding until this very opportune time where Queen Luna, with the help of the faculty members, are on the verge of usurping Dowling and installing Rosalind as the headmistress once more. Dowling is obviously not happy and refuses to leave the school in her hands. Unfortunately, Rosalind snaps her neck and leaves the girl dead on the floor, buried under blossoming. The ending explained of last episode. This show really should have been 10 to 15 episodes long. Everything feels so rushed, and the contrived teen drama isn't given anywhere near enough time to grow and evolve over time. Because of this rushed feel, every spatter argument across the season has felt completely superficial. The Alicia Bloom situation with the magic in episode 2 is a great example of this. That so easily could have been a whole episode long, exploring both Alicia and Bloom's past and how they coped with their magic. It also would have been nice to see Alicia's school flooded too. And then there's the teen romances which suffer from the exact same problem. There's just no time for anything to evolve naturally, so all the drama and ensuing fallouts feel rushed and far too tepid than they perhaps should be. Because of these time constraints, the plot suffers badly by rushing through the word building and ideas, while bringing up plenty of contrivances and plot holes. The situation with the phones and technology in general feels out of place and odd, accentuated by the fact there only seems to be three teachers working at Alfia. And what of that ending too? The show leaves the door wide open for a second season, with the promise that there's more to come on the horizon. So if this show is renewed, will there be ramifications for Bloom showing her powers off to humans? Is this fair game? It's not initially clear what happens when this occurs, or how either, which feeds back into that earlier idea of rushed world building.
hopefully if this is given the green light we'll get a longer season to flesh everything out, as while Fate has been an enjoyable enough binge watch, it's also a far cry from the best fantasy offerings out there.